This is the Lou Rockwell Show. Our guest this morning is Dr. David Gordon. David is editor of the Mises Review. He's a senior fellow at the Mises Institute, author of a number of books, many, many articles. His most recent book, The Essential Rothbard, and his archive repays looking at, just look at David Gordon, and the bottom of his articles, you can click and buy his books. I also want to recommend his bibliography on liberty. Just put bibliography into Google at LRC. You'll come up with a bibliography page, and take a look at David's. Very, very interesting. He really is the bookmaster. We oftentimes joke that he's the UCLA library uh, walking around in, in a single person. But this morning I want to talk to him about what, say, a person coming into libertarianism as a result of the Ron Paul movement or attracted by an interest in Austrian economics during this part of the business cycle. David, let's say, what are the the five books that you would recommend for the intelligent layperson to uh, introduce them to the basics of libertarianism? Well, thank you, Lou. It's very nice to be here. Uh, The first book I might recommend if someone's been interested in Ron Paul is I think Ron Paul has a very fine book that came out called The Revolution of Manifesto that really gives an excellent explanation of the basics of his political views and political philosophy. So I think people who've been involved in the Ron Paul campaign should read that as a get a deeper background. Then, you know, because the financial crisis is so much on our minds today, I think one book people should definitely read. It's a very short one, but it really gets to the essence of the Austrian account of money and the basis of the business cycle and explains why we're in the conditions we are today is by Murray Rothbard called What Has Government Done to Our Money? Uh, Murray Rothbard was uh, probably the main intellectual influence on uh, Ron Paul's own development in politics. Uh, Now, the third book is a great uh, classic of the 19th century by uh, the great French classical liberal Frederick Bastiat called The Law. It's, again, a a very short book. And what Bastiat asks is, uh, he said, if we're considering what the government does, the government has no more rights than the rights that the individuals have who make it up so the government can't really do anything that individuals can't uh, can't do either so just as individuals can't steal from one another the government has no right to steal from us in taxes and i think this is one of the really outstanding great classics of uh, libertarianism and it's essential reading another one that sort of uh, bastiat for the 20th century was uh, Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson. Uh, This asked us to consider not only the immediate consequences of government actions, but all the consequences, and it's one that uh, Hazlitt relied very much on Bastiat and brought him up to date. And the last one I mention is another book, a little longer, by Rothbard called For a New Liberty, in which uh, Rothbard gives a libertarian analysis of all the major problems, uh, political problems we have today, whether the environment or education, foreign policy. He gives a libertarian account based on his incomparable knowledge of the subject. Murray had an incredible bibliographic knowledge, and he was able to bring an enormous amount of information to bear on any problem that uh, he was talking about. You know, David, sometimes when people will write me about um, with questions or wondering what they should read, a uh, typical response of mine is, read Rothbard. And I direct them to the Rothbard collection that's on the uh, button on the left-hand side of the uh, opening page of com. You mentioned two of Murray's books. But I wonder if you talk a little bit more about uh, Murray as the key libertarian intellectual and the books he wrote and what we can learn from them. Yes, Murray Rothbard was certainly the greatest intellectual influence on my own political thinking in uh, economics and political philosophy. As I mentioned, he, he had a tremendous ability to absorb information on 
any subject and then not only to absorb the information but to uh, think about the topic in an original way. In in my own life, I've been fortunate enough to meet many great scholars and uh, people who are very well regarded in the academic world, but I've never met anyone who is uh, Murray with Murray's equal in his ability to synthesize information. I remember once he was uh, one of the first lectures I heard by him, which was at a conference in 1979. Someone asked him a question. He said, "Oh, yes. By the way, there's an unpublished dissertation on that in New York University. It came out in 1976, which he proceeded to quote. Uh, but his main contributions were." Really, in economic theory, he wrote a definitive treatise, uh, Man, Economy, and State, which carried further the great work of uh, Ludwig von Mises' Human Action, that uh, Murray developed this science of economics, which uh, uh, Mises called praxeology, developed it further than Mises had done, made a number of original contributions, and actually elaborated the concrete details of economic, the economic theory in more detail than Mises had done. And then he applied these, his results in the book uh, America's Great Depression to explaining the, applying the Austrian business cycle theory to the origins of the 1929 depression. And he was not only an economist, but he was also a, a political philosopher as power and market, which was part of man, economy, state, and ethics of liberty, apply his ideas to uh, uh, develop a, a political philosophy of a very original and remarkable kind. Uh, in uh, contemporary uh, political philosophy, uh, Robert Nozick gets a great deal of credit for libertarian views in his 1974 book, Anarchy, State, and Utopia, but really... The source of most of his ideas in that book were from Rothbard, so it's really Murray Rothbard who was the true uh, originator in, of the modern uh, libertarian liber, libertarianism, and it was a very principled and comprehensive libertarianism. It wasn't kind of a pragmatic style libertarianism, just saying uh, certain libertarian measures are good because they're more efficient than others, so whatever works best, we should adopt. Murray uh, certainly didn't disdain efficiency arguments, but he was more of a principled thinker. And then, as if that weren't enough, he was also a great historian. He had a uh, uh, four-volume book called Conceived in Liberty on the American Revolution, and then he, he, uh, he kept up with all the latest political events, and he uh, any story or news event you gave him, he would have an analysis based on uh, knowledge of all the various events. I'm sure if he were alive today and we asked him about the uh, situation in Iraq, he would know every small group, every tribal group, and what each was doing. And he would really, I've, I've really never met anyone like him. David, we both had the great blessing of uh, knowing and working with Murray, certainly the greatest man I ever knew. And thanks so much for talking to us about him, and thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you, Lou. You've been listening to The Lou Rockwell Show, produced by LouRockwell.com, the best-read libertarian website in the world. If you'd like to advertise on this podcast or on the website, email advertise at LouRockwell.com. And thanks for listening.